somebody was explaining to me how they're teaching children to work out unfamiliar words and they're looking for the vowel sounds and she said so look for a e i o u and then there's all sorts of rules that you do for syllable division and that is going to help the child to work out words so i just said to them just tell me first of all how many sounds if we just say the word let's just think about the word because you can um, when you when you saying words like rhythm, you could divide that into syllables just orally. Rhythm, rhythm. When you've got a syllable written down, it's different than when we're actually just talking about syllables and what have you. But think about the word rhythm. How many phonemes are there? So we use our duck hands. R, e, th, uh. Mm, rhythm because we've got to get from the the to the mm. we don't say rhythm it's rhythm rhythm think say it in a sentence rhythm i've got the rhythm so there's a schwa there isn't there there's a schwa sound there if you had this for mm, mm, at, and man there is a sound there we don't go straight from the the to the mm. there is a schwa sound there isn't there so the actual sounds that we use, forget the letters, the actual sounds are R I Th A M rhythm. R I Th A M rhythm. And the children, the SSP children are used to this because they work with the U where the schwa gets swallowed or doesn't, whatever. So R I Th A M rhythm. And then when we're code mapping, because the children wouldn't be able to do anything with this, would they? If they're looking for A-E-I-O-U. There's no A-E-I-O-U in it to work out the syllable division. So you have to know that this is what this word is. So let's have a look. So rhythm. So we know it's going to be R, E. So that's the vowel sound, even though it's not A-E-I-O-U. The. Mm, ah, okay, so rhythm. So this schwa here doesn't have its own speech sound line. So we're going to have r i th um just here. And what our children think is, okay, well, I know the sounds there. I could hear them. So the sounds were actually r E, er, e, the, this thumb, the, er, e, the, and there is a schwa, I can't ignore it, I did use a schwa sound, where has my schwa gone, is it hiding, there you go, um, I can't ignore it, it's not, it, it's there, er, e, the, er, uh. so it's definitely there, but we think of it as swallowed in this word by the mm. Just like when we look at the o, oh, like kettle, it gets swallowed. Pupil, it doesn't get swallowed. So we've got r i th um, and the children know that the schwa is there, but the schwa is swallowed. Rhythm. Now, doesn't that make more sense to you? So I was just talking to this person who was saying, oh, yes. We look at the A-E-I-O-U, we do syllable divisions, and as soon as I showed them this word, she said, well, it's not going to work for that. And I said, well, so how confusing for children if you're going to tell them something and then tell them, oh, but it doesn't work for that, or, oh, well, here's another rule to bypass that. So why don't we just keep it really simple for every child and just think about code mapping how do the sounds map with the graphemes on paper? And don't make it fit. Think about what actually happens. But with an SSP, every single word can be code mapped. No rules, nothing to, to memorise. It just makes sense. Whether it's a three-year-old or a 13-year-old dyslexic student who's been failed by the system. I said to this lovely teacher, well, OK, so here's the word fire. Um, so you've got an I and an E this time. Okay, so we're going to have that as, that's a consonant letter. That's a, a, a consonant letter. So we're going to do those in blue and we're going to do those in red because they're vowels. Is that right? So she said, yeah, yes, and just underline them as well, but just to show where those where those are. And then she said, hold on a second. Is, and she asked me, is that a split vowel digraph? <laughs> I said, well, you tell me, is that a split vowel digraph? I said, well, if it is, then we don't do that because it's a magic E. It's a silent T. 
I said, okay, so now how are we going, how does the child work out? What does that mean then? So does that mean that they know it's an I sound for I? Okay, well, what's this part then? How are you doing this? And she was like, I really don't know. So I said, well, let me just show you what we would do. Our two and three year olds, we would say, okay, so here, look, it's a split bar digraph because that is the I sound. So that represents the I speech sound. So F, I, uh, F, I, uh, and our three-year-olds would say, yeah, because that's the schwa. The R represents the schwa. But actually what's happened here is we've got two vowel sounds. This is one of them. So the two actual vowel letters represent one. And the consonant um, letter represents the second vowel sound. How confusing would that be? Keep it simple. So I showed you this one. I said, oh, that's great. Yes, yeah, so you have to keep those two together. When you've got two vowels, to, oh, she's, oh, we've got three vowels, but when you've got two together, keep them together. So we've got a vowel here and keep those together there. I said, so how many vowel sounds have you got in that word? And she said, well, two. Okay, so what is that vowel sound? Um, well, it's a word. So isn't that a consonant sound? K, w, e, n. So actually, there's only one vowel sound in this word, isn't there? And by then she was getting a little bit, oh, this just doesn't work. I said, well, no, it doesn't. But actually what's happened is it's made me create um, video six in the What I Wish Teachers Had Been Taught a University series on the Speech Sound Picks website. So it's number six where I'm going to be covering why please don't colour code A-E-I-O-U in red or look for the vowel letters or get mixed up with the vowel letters and vowel sounds and why I don't use syllable division. I have to tell you, um, what happens is, as an SSP teacher, you're so used to code mapping words, you get used to so many patterns, and that's what the children do too. So when she said to me about an R, she said, if an R follows the vowel, like A, R, O, R, whatever, that keeps it together. I said, oh great, that sounds a really nice, easy, simple rule to remember. Okay, so when we're splitting it up, when we're segmenting words, okay, so that has to stay together, yeah? So we've got um, consonant, consonant, vowel, consonant, consonant, letters. But you're putting those together, so now this is a vowel sound. She said, yep, yep. Okay, so say the word to me, and she said, story. I said, so where's the representation for the er? She said, well, it's there. I said, but I thought that was the or. Well, she's like, oh, okay, so store, store, oh, so we're missing the, uh, we're missing an er, store, I said, yes, so what actually do we need to do? Perhaps the rule that says don't split them up, perhaps we do need to split them up, because actually, we've got to have a representation for er, so actually, store, so she said, so that could be a picture, that could be a representation for or, I said, well, yes, look in the or cloud if you want, look at our sound wall. Um, <clears throat> it's up there in our all. So uh, <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, I really shouldn't, but it's like the children. The children love it when a teacher comes in and tries to teach them rules <laughs> because they'll give example words to say, well, what about this word? And I think, oh my goodness me, my work is done. <laughs>